Hi, and welcome to the Band Director's Desk podcast. A few days ago, I posted a video about the three things that you should always practice when you practice. This follow-up podcast is going to tie it all together. So if you uh, haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it. And in a few seconds here, we'll get started with how to tie all those three things that you should always practice every time you practice together. The Band Director's Desk Podcast. All right, welcome to the Band Director's Desk Podcast. My name is Joe Radke. I am a teacher, a trombone player, musician, a director, and um, today I'm going to talk about uh, goals and we can tie those goals into those three things that we talked about in the last podcast, uh, things that you should be practicing, things that you need to practice, and things that you want to practice. So goals are important because they give you a direction, right? And I think a lot of us ignore that in our practice sessions, just kind of wander around. And we, you know, it, it ends up being more of practicing what we want to practice, what we feel like practicing, rather than practicing what we should be practicing or what we need to be practicing. So how do you decide what you should be practicing and what you need to be practicing? Well, the first thing is you have to decide your long-term goal. So if your goal is to play a solo or to play a concert that's coming up or to do an audition or even longer term to get a job playing music or directing or whatever it is, you need to, to define that goal. And it needs to be simple and it needs to be a goal that uh, is stated in the way that you've already got it. So instead of saying in six months, I will be able to play whatever it is, and you would rather you would say in six months, I am going to be able to play more so symphonique, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So then you have to break it down and figure out, well, what does that mean? So if I'm going to be able to play this in that six months um, and be prepared for whatever it is, then uh, how do I get there? And that's where the should, should practice, need to practice, and want to practice come into play. So let's say I want to be able to play this. And let's say my recital is set for, I don't know, May. So my goal would be by May, I am playing more so symphonique focused and relaxed and musical so now how do i get there well let's think of the things that i i should practice to to get to more so symphonique well you can see right here that holy smokes there are a lot of flats and um, i'm not going to get into music theory here but this is either g flat major right or e flat minor and we can tell kind of by this first chord here it's E flat minor. So practicing in those two keys is essential, right? And then um, I think as I look through, I'll probably find other keys that I should practice as well. Um, so as you, as, as you look through this, and you should look off the piano part. If you're practicing a solo, you should always look off the piano part. In fact, I would um, say that it would be a good idea to practice off of the piano part so you can literally see what the piano player is doing. I also, when I'm practicing this, I um, practice playing the piano part on my instrument, you know, picking out the melodies and things. And so then I'm getting it into my head. Um, if you play piano, even better, learn the piano part, you know, even if it's a skeleton version. Um, it also tells you what their dynamics are and all of that kind of thing so that you know, you know, what's going on while you're practicing. So those are things that you, you know, should be practicing. You should be learning the piano part while you're learning the solo. You should be looking at the key. You should be learning all these terms and everything. So that can go into your smaller term goal setting. Um, you know, as we look through this piece now, uh, one thing that you should always do whenever you get a new piece of music um, is you should read all the text on it and figure out what it all means. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Um, you know, Andante Sostenuto, why do you write that there? Um, you know, as we go through the piece, there's, uh, let me erase all that, huh? Woo, boom. As we go through this piece, um, there's all kinds of information in here um, that you should you should pick up on. And sometimes the most important information is written 
on the ends. On this piece, it's not really, but um, but it gives you some insight into what the composer was thinking when they wrote the piece. And sometimes they literally tell you why they wrote the piece, and that that could be important to know. Okay, so we've got some goals now. We've got to practice in E flat minor. We've got to practice in G flat major. We've got to learn some terms. We've got to learn some rhythms, maybe. If you don't know how to play these rhythms, then you should find some etudes with those rhythms in them. And, and then now all the stuff that you should be practicing becomes more relevant because it is going into the thing that you need to practice and the thing that you decided you wanted to practice. You want to play a recital, so you need to practice this piece. And so you should practice the things that make this piece easier. I hope that makes sense. Um, and you can do that with, with any, any piece of music that you're working on. And so if you get a little notebook um, and you write down, write down what you're working on um, and then write down your goal. Where are we going with all this stuff that we're working on? And, um, and, then write down all the things that you should be practicing based on that. You'll have a whole list and then all of a sudden a practice routine emerges that is efficient, it relevant to what you're working on, and it gives you direction. Um, some other goals that you might not be thinking about um, could be, I just want to be a better sight reader. So what does that mean? Um, what, what keys am I weak in? Practice those scales. You know, where, what rhythms do I not know how to do? What kinds of things can I do to practice to be a better sight reader? And if you uh, don't think sight reading is important, you should think it's important. Because if you ever want to play music as a professional, that's a really, really important thing to be able to do. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long. I think that's probably enough for today. Um, so keep practicing the things that you should be practicing, the things that you need to be practicing, and the things that you want to practice. But use the things you want to be practicing to influence the things that you should and you need to practice. That's all for today. I'm out. <laughs>